and welcome to GDN Live. If it's Wednesday, we are here, and today with me I have guest Tom Moore, who is with our Goose Creek chapter down in Charleston Market. Uh, he is with Edgewater Sports Marketing, and I also have Tom Winslow coming on later in the show, and uh, he is with Winslow Law Firm down in Polly's Island, and he's with our Merle's Inlet chapter. And guys, just let me remind you that if you are uh, viewing us on your favorite social media channel, all you have to do is type in the comments and we'll try to get those questions on the air. I will also like to tell you that we don't have uh, the call in feature today because we are moving uh, live from my house today because we had a little bit of Internet problems at our studio. But we'll be doing that. And I also want to thank our sponsor which is Grand Strand Law Group. Uh, they are located in Myrtle Beach and North Myrtle Beach, 843-492-5422. And guys, stay with us. GBN Live next. And welcome to GBN Live. I have with me Tom Moore with Edgewater Sports Marketing. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Todd. How are you doing this morning? I am super. Thank you so much for joining us and being on our show with us today. Uh, let's start off a little bit. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, where are you from originally, that kind of stuff. Uh, any family, just tell us about yourself. So let's get to know you. Well, a, a quick a quick thumbnail sketch. Uh, I was born in Dayton, Ohio, moved to uh, Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Um, graduated from Beaver Falls High School back in the dark ages and uh, and uh, went to the Citadel where I graduated from uh, and back in the darker ages. But uh, and then, you know, from a family standpoint, uh, of course, I'm, I'm married. Uh, I have three kids, um, Ashley, Rhett and Christopher, and I have six grandkids, three, three granddaughters that bing, bang, boom in age that are very good friends. Uh, Ava, Lexi, and and uh, Lulu, and then I have uh, two grandsons. Um, who did I leave that? Ava, Lexi, Lulu, Claire. <laughs> it's it's after a while, huh? I'm telling you, after a while, you know. But uh, but but it's great. You know, FaceTime has made it made it wonderful. Yeah. And um, so then, you know, from from that point, uh, you know, my wife has been a, a tremendous supporter and and has helped me every step of the way. And I'm certainly blessed to have, have Trisha as uh, part of our team. Sure. But, um, you know, as, as I graduated from college, I went in the air force, I was in the air force for four years and back in the Vietnam days and, and, um, I, you know, served, served my time left, got out of, got out of the air, um, literally fell into a coaching job. And, um, at that time getting into college coaching was, was not easy. But I had a good friend who knew a friend and so forth, and I ended up in, in the business. And I stayed in that business for 35 years. Um, you know, like a lot of assistant coaches, I moved to a lot of places. But, you know, most prominently in, in where I put my roots down, I think, it, more importantly, it was at Clemson. And I was at Clemson for 10 years as an assistant. And I left Clemson. I went to Gardner-Webb University as a head coach there for five years. And I left Gardner-Webb, and I came back home to the Citadel, my alma mater, and I was head coach at the Citadel for, uh, for five years. And, uh, after, uh, unfortunately at that, at that particular time, they weren't paying coaches as they pay them today. So, uh, you know, I found some other things, found some other interests that I had and predominantly in real estate. So I was in real estate for a little while. And, and, um, and then we, uh, we had a great opportunity to, uh, work with the Marriott corporation in their, in their land development. I did a few few years with that and went to work with a good friend of mine, business partner of mine at Commons Medical. We built medical office buildings throughout Central Florida. And um, unfortunately, uh, that business dissolved. Brad died after about five years. And and from that point on, um, I, I got into the public speaking business. And I was a I was a I was a motivational speaker across North America. I don't think there's a place I haven't been to. And I loved it and it was great. But, you know, after after 10 years of that, I um, kind of got tired of telling people, you know, they say, where do you live? I, well, I live in, you know, the Atlanta airport. Yeah. You know? <laughs> out of your suitcase. <laughs> That's right. Out of my suitcase. And so uh, anyway, I'd, I left that business and, and moved back to Charleston where we'd always had a home. And um, and we started Edgewater Sports Marketing. I started Edgewater Sports Marketing simply because. I, in my in my business in in my motivational things, 
um, had spoken with some people in this business and had helped them develop their business. And I thought, you know, one thing that is really, really lacking in, in the Tri-County area in Charleston is any kind of really awareness for who they our schools are. So we started a business. We started a business in 2014 and, and we're eight years into that business now. Um, our job is, is primarily to support our local schools. Um, we are a full-time advertising company. We advertise in, with print media, social media, um, all the different, <laughs> all the different formats. And, you know, our byline is simply this, our, <clears throat> our customer is our client and the school is a beneficiary. We take part of our marketing dollars and we donate back to our schools. This this year we will have we will have passed the million dollar mark for what we've been able to to raise and, and do wow. as, as far as our schools are concerned. And, and I do this because having been on that side of the fence, I know exactly what it's like for those schools and, and for those coaches and for those athletic directors. There's not enough days in a week and there's not enough time in each day. And um to do the things that they have to do to help promote their schools, help promote their players. So we have taken over that burden. And on top of that, of course, we provide them an unbudgeted check, which, you know, their checks are their budget every year. Athletics and arts are two things that are cut continually. And we try to fill that void. We've been successful doing it. Our coaches love us. Our community likes what we do. And, and that's what we're all about. And, and Tom, I, 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 if I remember correctly on your website, it's, you had 12 schools listed, but they're not all public schools either. You have some private schools in there as well, right? We, we do. Um, we, we, we do both public and private. It, doesn't, it really doesn't make any difference. And um, we try to spread our net. And that I think, you know, the, those 12 schools have blossomed to over 25 now. And uh, we're donating more money in more ways to more schools because we have more advertisers that are supporting. And, you know, our, our advertisers are, are quick to find out and realize that First of all, it's economical to do business with us. And secondly, we, we give them a platform that, that is hard to approach. And that's, you know, every one of these schools has, you know, 1,200 plus students in them and teachers and staff and so on and so forth. And they can get their message out for a very economical price. And it's a win-win for everybody. It's a win for our clients. It's a win for the school. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I, I don't know if you know this or not, but I used to own a marketing firm as well. And, and uh it seems like any time I did something for the schools that the the public or the local businesses always wanted to get involved. And that was a win win situation for everyone. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have a very captive audience at the school for whether you're doing a football program or or something to support the cheerleaders or, or volleyball team or whatever it is. Always the community wanted to get behind that. And uh, and it was a great place because you also had the spectators that were able to take advantage of that type of uh, advertising and marketing as well. Yeah, I, I tell you, that's a, a huge big part of it, because, you know, you would think that, well, a, a school like Somerville or a school like Fort Dorchester or Bishop England, which are well-known schools in, in the Charleston community, you would think, well, you know, they, they don't need anything. Uh, people know who they are. They go see them play every week. That's not true. Um, it's, it's very difficult in the course of a football season. You get a rainy night, you got nobody sitting in the stands. You got nobody sitting in the stands. You make no money, you know, right. that type of thing. And, um, you know, what we have done is we've been able to leverage the community with our school and consequently fill that void, fill that void of an empty stadium, fill that void of an empty gymnasium, uh, fill that void of people not being involved. And, and now all of a sudden you've got this great community support. Um, and we work hard on that. We, we work hard on promoting the community. And the best part of it is, you know, in the last eight years, we have found our schools, our students, our administrators, they know who support them and yes. they support them. And, yep. you know, our tagline is we, we do business with people who do business with us. And I tell you, that has caught on. And, um, you know, these people that advertise with us are very quick to find out they they get tons of referrals out of our school. Yep, you're absolutely right. Guys, if you're watching, let me remind you that if you uh, are watching live, uh, just type in your comments in the uh, in the box below in the comment section, and we'll try to get those uh, up here as soon as possible and see if we can get some questions in here for Tom as well. And uh, Tom, talk to us about what your ideal client is for Edgewater Sports Marketing. What, what, what do you look for, or is there a certain client that you go after? Well, it's it's a two twofold situation. Number one, um, our our goal is is to to band the community together, and so we want 
you know, the small business guy that doesn't have a big advertising budget that has a difficult time getting, particularly now with the, you know, what we've gone through the last two years, I mean, advertising dollars are something that have, have dried up as far as big, big bucks are concerned. We offer, we offer the alternative of very, you know, very manageable budgets and the catchphrase of being able to be a part of a community. You know, we, we talk about our advertising family. We're not, we're not just some company that goes out there and sells ads and walks away. We, we have an advertising family of, of 480 some odd people. We know them. They know us. I, I tell them all the time. Yeah, my wife doesn't like it all the time, but I answer the phone. I answer the phone when you call. Yeah, you're not going to get, I'll get back to you next week. I answer the phone and we solve problems and we help people get better. Yeah, that's true. Well, Tom, I know that Edgewater Sports Marketing and GBN have kind of the same uh, mission that we're after, and that is that we want to help each other grow their businesses, whether it's through marketing, whether it's through <laughs> referrals, whether it's just basically getting together and helping each other out. Um, is there one thing that you would say would be a cost effective, but it's also some way that a business could promote their business today and get started today that would put them on that right track? Well, I, Todd, I think, I think this, like I say, we're very economical in what we do, but the, the biggest thing we do is we connect people. Um, just like GBN connects people, we yeah. connect people and, and our advertise, advertisers get connected with schools and communities. And so we have a, we have a, you know, a family atmosphere, so to speak. And so our clients are, you know, our best clients are, are the mom and pop people. Yeah. That, that advertise. And yet we have good gracious. We have party. We have, uh, we have uh, car companies. We have insurance companies. We have bigger people too. They're just looking to expand their net. And that's great because they provide, you know, they provide more income for our schools. Right. Well, that's awesome, Tom. Uh, guys, if you're interested in learning more about Edgewater Sports Marketing, you can give them a call at 843-823-5400, and Tom and his team will be more than happy to help you out. So uh, you can reach out to them any day, anytime there. And uh, as well, Tom, it's a pleasure. Great talking to you. I'm glad you uh, were able to come on today, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Guys, stay with us, and we'll be right back with Tom Winslow with Winslow Law Firm. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jess the Sand. I've been a canine liaison at Grand Strand Law Group for, oh, 30 years? What's that? You don't believe me. I meant 30 dog years, of course. First rule of lawyering, read the fine print. Anywho, my humans at Grand Strand Law Group have a combined 20 years experience. I know, not as much as me, but that's in people years. So yeah, still pretty impressive. Real estate, estate planning, or probate, you need GSLG. Grand Strand Law Group. Trust us, we have a dog. Great Business Networking grew out of the idea that by creating lasting friendships within the community, we can make the community even better. I was looking to network with professionals and to be able to refer my clients to somebody that I trust. Well, it's really important to trust the members of the group because uh, we really generate quality referrals and to know somebody, be friends with them and get that the qualified referral is the key to success. It is networking, but it doesn't feel like networking, and that is important to me. Um, I come to the meetings, I have fun, I make great connections, and I help grow my business. GBN. Uh, GBN, these are some of the best professionals in the market, and having that resource available to me, that's priceless. Well, uh, GBN is a network um, of business professionals that build long lasting friendships that will not only grow my business, will grow yours as well. Uh, that's what referral marketing is all about. GBN really is the most important marketing for your business. Check us out today. Okay, welcome back to GBN Live. I'm Todd Kartner, your host and executive director of GBN. And with us, we have Tom Winslow, the one and only. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me here. 
Of course, Tom. Tell us about Tom Winslow. Who is this guy? Uh, he's one of the ugliest guys you'll see, but uh, <laughs> but he can talk. So he's an he's an attorney down in uh, the Myrtle Beach area over at Winslow Law Firm, and uh, he's really appreciative of everything you've done for us, Todd. So thank you so much. Hey, uh, not a problem. Down, yeah, been down here about uh, going on 15 years now. Started off in Columbia. Uh, we do a lot of work over at Winslow Law in regard to personal injury. You know, estate planning, any kind of work you really need in regard to taking care of you as a person, as a business, as a family. Yeah. You have an office in Columbia and Pauley's Island, right? We do. That's correct, sir. Yeah. So we have three attorneys up in Columbia as well. You know, we've serviced the entire state and I've had cases in about 28 different states around the country. So we've been blessed to uh, be able to wake up every day and be able to serve people. And that's what we try to do. Put the, put the attention on the client, not just the case. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know you've been around for a while, and and uh, we're going to talk a little bit. No, is that is that, why, is that because I'm bald? Is that what you're uh, referring hey, to? Hey, we go to the same barber, buddy. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you, at least you're able to grow it on your face now. I'm not able uh, to That's turning gray, too, now. <laughs> um, but, Tom, you uh, you guys practice not uh, – you're considered a general practice law firm. So that means you do more than just – focus on real estate or criminal law or, or family. Right. Law. And you know, what we try to do is we try to combine the small law firm concept, like a niche law firm into a larger practice, right? So we have six attorneys and each one of them has their own niche, right? So they all have their own kind of small firm within the large firm. So that way as a comprehensive whole, we're able to take care of pretty much everyone and anything that might walk in the door by putting them with the proper person that knows what they're doing. Yeah, uh, we have a, a comment here. I don't know who it's from. They didn't, uh, uh, we don't have their information, but it says, hey, Tom, looking good. I agree with you on Todd and all he's done for GBN members. So, guys, we appreciate that. Okay. And, uh, That's probably my wife. <laughs> she hit her, hit, her, hit her identity there. Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, that's okay. We'll, we'll welcome the comments. So, uh, Oh, it says it's Casey Hall. So she's our, oh, there go. <laughs> she's our chapter leader in our Conway chapter. So, and Tom, you're with our Merle's Inlet chapter. Uh, and uh, and you guys uh, uh, are growing like crazy down there as well. But um, you, um, uh, let, let's talk about uh, your networking. I know you do a lot of networking in the area. Uh, you had a beautiful, wonderful, large Christmas party where you invited people from several networking groups to come together. But uh, let's, I want to talk about networking because I know you're really good at it. you you go out and, and you, uh, pop in and out of a lot of places. So let's talk about that and what it means to your law practice. You know, when, when we start off the firm, you know, I've been practicing for 16 years. We've had the firm for about nine years. You know, and like most small businesses, you don't have a whole lot of money to spend on marketing, right? right. You're, you're out there hustling, trying to make money. And one of the best ways to do that is through just shaking a hand and that's, and that's networking with people and meeting people. So I made it uh, almost an objective. I'm going to put every networking event I can onto my calendar. And if I don't have another activity going on for the business, right? If I don't have to be in court or a deposition and I'm available, I'm going to go to that networking event. And the glorious thing, especially with GBN, you know, a lot of times the meetings start at seven, seven thirty in the morning. Sometimes you have meetings at five thirty, six o'clock at night. And, and I just made the conscious choice that I'm going to literally sacrifice sleep and sacrifice some other things to be able to generate that business I need to succeed, right? And so I'm still doing that. This morning we had our GBN meeting at 7.30 before I came down to the office and started the day. And, and networking is a job. You know, it, it's sometimes, and Todd, you know this, sometimes you have to put on a face. Sometimes you have to pretend you're not exhausted. <laughs> but this is crucial. Yeah, to me, it's just as crucial as actually doing the work because if you don't have the clients, you don't have any work to do, right? right. And so that, that's what networking is about. Plus, our, our firm, we want to be committed counsel for our community and our clients. Networking is a part of growing a community. It's about growing your business community and being there for other people. As an attorney, uh, our job is to be there for people. Our job is to be there for businesses. And, and it's serving them within the community and within what they need when they need us. And so they have to they have to be there for you. We we were talking about that uh, what we call backstage just before the show actually started, and it, it really doesn't matter what you look like. And this is why this is why a referral networking works so well is that if I refer someone to you, then you already have a huge chance or a better chance of actually working with that client because if that person knows, likes, and trusts me, then they're right. going to know, like, and trust you because I referred you. And so it doesn't matter what you look like, but doing things like this, it allows somebody to 
put a name with a face or a face with a name, I guess, and get to know you. The one thing I, I admire about you versus a lot of other attorneys out there is you are out in the public. So people know you. How many times does somebody go to uh, not just a law firm, but any business and they knock on the door and they say, hey, can I meet with whoever the owner of the business is? And there's 15 gatekeepers you have to go by right. to be able to get there. And that's that's I guess that's why I really wanted to focus on that networking a little bit because you are out in the public. People know who you are. So when it comes time to sit down to discuss a motor vehicle accident or closing a real estate firm or a transaction or doing estate planning, which is, you know, a, a difficult time for a lot of people anyway, they already know your face. They already know your personality. They already know who they're going to be working with. And that makes a huge difference in, in, um, uh, business period well and, and trust right i mean you're, you're, most people you know todd you have a glorious job of being able to make people happy by selling their house or by helping them buy a house most people when they come to a lawyer it's, it's not because necessarily they want to right it's it's my job to try to put them in the best place i can but it's not always the most glorious situation and so they have to trust that person just like if you're going to a doctor and that level of trust comes from a sense of service right am i here to service them or are they here to service me and a lot of attorneys get it to a point in maybe their life where they feel like they are important. Right. And, and to me, there's nothing more important than the actual client that we're servicing and taking care of and taking care of them and not just their paperwork and their file. Right. And so we continuously try to put our focus on actually the people we serve versus believing. Unfortunately, I believe a lot of professionals believe that they're the ones actually being serviced. Right. Well, and I so see. Only, yeah. Only do that is to be out there in the community and be there with people. 100% agree. And so does uh, Ulitsa, who is uh, uh, joining us here. It looks like she's joining us on Facebook and she agrees with us. So uh, I so agree with Ulitsa as well. <laughs> we, we got Ulitsa's approval. So everything's great. That's that's true. So, um, Tom, I want to talk a little bit about uh, your facility in Pauley's Island specifically. You have a two story building. Yes, sir. Two story. Yeah. Very right. nice two story building, uh, tons of office space. And you have uh, uh, created an area called the dock. Correct. So Absolutely. Talk, to, talk to us about the dock. I want to know more about the dock. So we, we got this building. It's about 10,000 square feet. And it was to hold our 20 staff, give or take. When COVID hit, obviously, a lot of people started working remotely. And we realized that after a little while, people didn't want to work from home all the time. 100% <laughs> agree. And so, right, as you sit at home, and so we've got 24 offices along with three conference rooms with video conferencing, telephone conferencing, and a big open space, of course, where we held the Christmas party, which probably had somewhere around 100 people or so at it, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, pretty comfortably. And we've made it available for the community to use, and they can rent out spaces on a temporary basis, on a more permanent basis, uh, allows them to expand, and it provides them with a full-service office for pretty much a flat fee that they can just come in and just use a conference room, use a big open space for training, or have an office to actually sit in for a day or for a year, depending on what their needs are. Right. And there's not really a whole lot like it in this area. So it's kind of the executive center for the South Strand area. Yeah, we uh, and they're not small offices either. A lot of them are at least 10 by 12, right? That's correct. And, and a lot of them, there's some of them that are furnished, some of them that are open to be furnished, right? Yeah. So. A lot of flexibility and opportunity for people to expand or at least to get out of the house that they feel like they need to get out, have a conference, have a training, have an office. Yeah. Uh, Tom, lastly, before we go, I want to talk about a client. So if a client needs your services, what what do you want them to know? I, I, I know you. I've known you for a long time. And I think that uh, just feeling comfortable and at ease before they come in is important. But what do you want that client to know? regardless of what kind of client it is or what, what service they need. The biggest thing you have to do as an attorney is help a client feel comfortable being willing to speak with you. Too many people are afraid to express the truth behind the situation or simply afraid of the cost associated with an attorney or simply with an attorney. Right. And so the biggest thing I want clients to know is that it's our job as attorneys to serve you. And, and, and if you have a legal issue, just like a medical issue, it's best to resolve it at the very beginning of the situation, not to let it linger, not let it carry on, and maybe even be proactive and try to prevent that from becoming an issue. And the best way to do that is simply just to reach out. That's why we're attorneys and counselors, right? It's not just our job to talk, it's our job to listen and to give our advice on our experience. You know, and that's what we work on here at the Winslow Law Firm 
is use our education and our experience to give that advice, either keep you out of trouble, get you out of trouble, or, or put you into a great place moving forward. And that's our job. That's what we want to do. And, and even if even if the outcome is not the best, knowing you, you want it to be the best outcome for the situation. That's right. I, I tell people all the time that I can't keep you from being sued, but I can try to prevent the liability or lessen the impact it might have. Right. Right. And that, that's important. That's that's why people want to know you and and uh, and are able to uh, reach out to you because uh, you are in the public. And like I said, uh, we appreciate that. Guys, Thank if you me. need uh, an attorney uh, for your real estate, your criminal, your family, your probate, your wills, your trust, your uh, somebody to well, walk your dog. Or somebody just to talk. <laughs> or somebody just to talk. You can give them a call at 843-357-9301. They're located right on uh, 17 in Pauly's Island. You can't miss them. Big, beautiful building uh, on the right if you're heading south. And uh, guys, if you need Tom or his team, please reach out to him. Tom, it's been mm -hmm. a pleasure like always. I appreciate you being on the show today. And uh, we will catch you soon, my friend. Thank you, sir. Winslowlawyers.com. Thanks, y'all. There you go.